This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is once again live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Hope you're enjoying this Wednesday, February 16th. Wherever and however you're connected, nice to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who is currently too busy taking FaceTime calls amidst interviews like Mark Pope. His name is Jerem Jordan. I wish. Oh, actually, hold on just a second. Are you serious? Jimmer, what up, dog? Okay, apparently this really is a thing. Doing, I'm good. Hey, hey. it's Jimmer for debt. We're just doing the show. How you doing, man? Oh, now's a bad time? <laughs> yeah, now's a bad time. Can we chat later? Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, well, I bet it was amazing. Hey, let's just catch up later. Is that all right? All right, yeah, yeah, my fault, guys. Okay, all good. See thanks, you, Jimmer. Thanks, man. Good see to ya. see you, bro. See ya. There's Spence. See you, Jimmer. <laughs> see you, <ya>. thanks. <laughs> Jimmer Fredette. I was so excited to hear about his breakfast. Jimmer Fredette. You know, I, sometimes he forgets we do the show, man. you know, but that's all right. Brandon Averett interrupted Mark Pope yesterday, which yeah. was pretty funny. Yeah. So, hey. I got I got Jimmer. So we just we good. just we just won up to that. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> he always tells me what he has for breakfast. I was excited about it. Uh, the relationship has developed to that point. The friendship has gone next level. Yeah. Now now I have someone else. <laughs> uh, Greg Short. I'm not going to accept from you. <laughs> Why are you calling me Greg Short, BYU fan? No, I no. We're done. I love you. Bye. Here is Bye. your show lineup. <laughs> uh, no more interruptions. I gotta, I gotta we got to get off. to the show I gotta lineup. Shut this off. Jeez. Holy cow. Good gosh. BYU men's and women's basketball have a massive week. Maybe that's what Greg and Jimmer really want to talk about. The women host LMU and Gonzaga in what feels like a championship determining scenario this week. The men face the Gales on Saturday night at St. Mary's in Moraga. Do the men of BYU have to win that game to get an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament? Mm. Plus, our Cougars in the NFL season recap continues with Brady Christensen, who will join us to reflect on his rookie year with the Carolina Panthers and softball standout Violet Zavodnik. We could call her a baseball standout, too, because she was a baseball standout in high school. She'll be in studio to preview a crazy month of February leading up to the eventual home opener for the Cougars in March. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Last night on BYU Basketball with Mark Pope, the coach gave an update on Foose's groin injury. You know, these muscle strains, especially groins, are just super temperamental. So, you know, is it, is it going to be a few days or a few weeks or a few months? We just don't know. Please, <laughs> let, it be, let, it be, let it be shorter rather than longer. But um, he's getting all the, the, the mental attention he possibly can. Of course, he's so diligent, so he's going to do everything he can to get healthy as soon as he can. <laughs> You know, he plays at St. Mary's Saturday night on The Deuce, ESPN, ESPN2. No one calls it that anymore. They used to. And BYU Radio with uh, radio pregame at 9 Eastern time. Karma for Foose. Please. Yeah. Let, let's get go. healed up, man. How about some news from Cougars and the Pros? Yoli Child still doing his thing for the Salt Lake City Stars, including 70% shooting last night. He had 14 rebounds. The Stars lost, but really, Yoli is winning. Yeah, we don't care. Matt Harms had four points and four rebounds in a loss for the Freyport Skyliners playing in Germany. It's a slow Wednesday when we're throwing out four and four in losses. Today, the NPSF Swim and Dive Championships begin in Monterey Park and Mission Viejo, California. BYU has the best score or time in 20 of the 42 events among the nine participating schools. Now it's time to rise and shout because it's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending, sponsored by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Does it all come down to beat St. Mary's or bust when we're discussing BYU men's basketball and their chances of an at-large in the NCAA tournament? Is it really that simple and dramatic? Or... Jerem, is there an at-large path to the NCAA tournament that does not include BYU beating St. Mary's on Saturday? The only path that exists where you don't beat St. Mary's is beating Gonzaga in the semis. Really? That's the only path I really see. I just, I just think it's going to be hard um, to be – okay, because listen, BYU is barely in. So if BYU loses Saturday, BYU is out. What is BYU going to do to climb back in? 
Now, we don't know how the bubble's going to be. We don't know what teams are going to clinch bids and what won't and how that will affect BYU. Thus far, the bubble is weak, but we don't know what's going to happen in tournament week. Right, and I don't want to leave it up to chance. I would like to leave it up to merit, which is win Saturday, and then you've got to you've got to hopefully, if you're on Gonzaga's side, you just play a competitive game and then you hope for the best. If you're not on Gonzaga's side, which would be incredible, somehow BYU got the three seed at that point, then you need to probably win that semifinal. And then you're like, okay, we're in a pretty good spot. You're still sweaty um, on, on Selection Sunday, <laughs> but, but you put on some deodorant and you're feeling confident, right, <laughs> that you won't sweat through your shirt. You've got some deodorant on if you beat St. Mary's. If you beat St. Mary's <laughs> and or you, like, get that semi. My concern is that if BYU doesn't beat St. Mary's, that they have no shot at being on the other side of the bracket at, of Gonzaga. It feels like BYU would be the four or five seed. And, we again, we still don't know. Like, I'm telling you, Ken Palm adjusted win percentage is coming. It's like the league is not going to make up all those games. They're not going to do just straight up win percentage. It feels like that will happen. Okay. So we're going to see it this week or early next week, you'd think, because next week's the last week of the regular season. Then we'll have a sense of what seed BYU could be in the tourney. But without a win against St. Mary's, it feels like it's going to be extremely difficult. So to me, for the NCAA tournament hopes, which we say at large, BYU hasn't won a conference tournament since 01. I think that BYU may go the rest of history without winning a conference tournament tournament in men's basketball, Spencer, mm, mm. because you're, you're not going to beat the Sags. I'm sorry. It, like, if BYU does, amazing. Spencer will shave his head. But then you go to the Big 12, <laughs> you ain't winning that one either. Like, you think it's hard to win the WCC. BYU couldn't even win the Mountain West since I won. Like, it ain't happening in the Big 12, which we'll get to in the whip, by the way. There's two 4-9 teams in league who are in the bracket. Yeah. 4-9 in league, in the bracket. Brace yourself for BYU having that situation. Several times. So I don't really see an at-large path without beating St. Mary's that doesn't include a win over Gonzaga. Hear me out. And I already mentioned the week bubble, but conference championship week can put in some weird bid stealers. You know, I, you're right. BYU shouldn't leave it up to that. But just maybe there is enough merit available left even after a loss to St. Mary's. Okay? Again, I know it sounds crazy to think, Wait, BYU could still get in as an at-large if they lose to St. Mary's? Well, what else is left on their resume, or what could they even potentially put on their resume other than beating Gonzaga? I present to you, if BYU is the five seed, Jerem, let's Mm -hmm. say that they lose to St. Mary's, they finish nine and six, and to me, nine and six in league with the Ken Palm adjusted metric that we are anticipating in play would probably put BYU at a five seed, at best a four seed depending on what San Francisco and Santa Clara do. At best, a four seed. But if BYU is playing on Friday, then you just win a game, probably have to beat Pacific or LMU. Then on No guarantees Saturday, against Pacific. Then on Saturday, <laughs> BYU would play either San Francisco or Santa Clara. Now, if I'm yeah. looking at the resume, I'm hoping it's San Francisco that BYU has to play in a quarterfinal sure. on Saturday because all of right a now. sudden you yeah. have a quad one game. Yeah. And what have we learned at the West Coast Conference Tournament about teams that play earlier and have adjusted to the baskets in the arena? They that typically, several of them are at home watching. They typically play. They, they typically play better, at least in BYU's instance. Like when they match up against a team that's already played a game and has kind of got things going, it, there's no rust. They've already shaken off the rust. So if BYU plays Friday, wins, Sometimes. and then plays San Francisco, and they have a quad one win that would then put them in a game against Gonzaga, will that be rewarded? That would also put BYU at 23 wins on the season. So if BYU doesn't beat St. Mary's, I hope the Cougars are playing on Friday so they have more games, more opportunities to win, and then they get that opportunity at San Francisco or maybe Santa Clara on Saturday with a lot of eyes watching. And just maybe with San Francisco on the bubble too, it comes down to that. Hey, whoever wins this game, is going to get that third bid from the West Coast Conference. It doesn't function that way with the committee per se. They, they don't look at, like, well, you would get X bids. They just look at individual teams, right? But, yeah, if the – If it'd BYU be goes two of three against San Francisco, right, they would win two of three against San Francisco, then that, I would think, would carry some weight in the human I, element in the mind of the committee, and BYU would have won six of seven games going into – a potential semifinal with Gonzaga. Yeah, head-to-head comes down to it, but only when you're talking about those teams as it pertains to the final spots or whatever. 
That's my understanding, as it was told to me. So, yeah, ideally, you get a game with San Francisco. That'd be nice. My fear is that you don't. My fear is that BYU is a f- the five seed. And let's be honest, just like zoom out. BYU is the five seed going into the West Coast Conference Tournament. Shouldn't be in the three. Yeah, the metrics don't look good <laughs> like if just, you were the five seed, but. Like, just that fact, it's like, what? No, we would, in, in this is the only year in 11 that we will have even considered that. If we zoom out, it's like, you're the fifth best team in the West Coast Conference in the regular season. You shouldn't be in the NCAA tournament. But BYU has enough quad one and quad two wins, which is which is uh, good. And if BYU can finish hot. If you added one more quad one win against San Francisco, then you're talking about probably eight quad one and quad two wins. Yeah. And, and those quad twos are nice. Like, you'd have hopefully four. Hopefully everyone holds, right? If you have three – if you have less than three, then you probably shouldn't be in the tourney. So, yeah, it's – I don't know. I think BYU needs to beat St. Mary's on Saturday. <sighs> or it's going to be really hard. Like, if BYU doesn't beat St. Mary's, um, you know, they're, they're not going to be a position to play San Francisco, um, you know, as easily. Maybe San Francisco gets the three in the St. Mary's, and then it's Santa Clara. And it's like, well, it's quad two, but eh, it doesn't move the needle that much. Yeah. But we've been pointing we, to four you, teams all year getting in from the West Coast Conference. I never thought four were going to get in. I know they're in right now, but guess what? One of those is going to get knocked out. Like, one, it feels like someone will bump someone off the bubble late. So you ultimately think that the West Coast Conference three, will get max. three. Yeah, four is crazy. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. Thank the ACC for stinking this if year. If BYU doesn't that, beat St. Yeah. Mary's on Saturday, hope that the Cougars get an opportunity at San Francisco in Saturday's quarterfinal. That'd be nice. Because that would absolutely boost the resume. What I am telling you is it doesn't necessarily dramatically simply come down to you have to beat St. Mary's. Things can play out. And then you got to root for a bunch of the teams on the bubble to lose so that BYU can enjoy the merits of other teams creating a weak bubble. Well, and it's beyond the bubble, too. It's like, okay – you know, so and so out of the small league. No bid stealers. Win. Yeah, bid no stealers. bid stealers. Like, weak bubble. If if like yeah, there was going to be a two bid league with the Missouri Valley or whatever. Like yeah, it, no, I don't want BYU sitting in the final, you know, four in, going into Vegas because then it's like oh, we're going to be n- super nervous on Selection Sunday probably no matter what. But BYU, BYU did this done themselves by losing to. Santa Clara and Pacific. If you don't have those losses, BYU is clear of the final eight. Even right Pacific. Right just, now. Even, you just make it one. Even if BYU lost at Santa Clara and then lost to San Francisco and Gonzaga, they just beat Pacific. Then BYU is probably not one of the last four teams in. Perhaps. Yeah, last four? No. But, like, I'm talking Maybe one uh, of the last eight. The bubble, in. to me, is the yeah. final eight. Okay. The four buys and the last four in. BYU's resume, obviously, bubblicious. So let's update you because we do this on a daily basis leading up to – Selection Sunday, which amazingly is in less than a month. Holy cow. In the net, BYU, 53. Hey, they jumped a spot, Jerem. 50 is not good. All right. You, you want to be low 40s at worst. 53, Ken Palm, 12 seed in bracketology, second to last team in, according to Joe Lenardi. Andy New Katz, this morning, last in. Last in this last morning. In right now. Andy Katz released his new bracket yesterday and had BYU as the first team out. Team rankings has BYU with just an 18.2% chance of making the tournament. <sighs> you have to wonder how much that would jump if BYU wins at St. Mary's. Or goes down. Now, if BYU loses at St. Mary's, <laughs> I'm on board with the 18.2% chance because a lot of what's things it, have to fall What's it going to go down to if BYU loses? I don't think it'll move that much. 10? 12? Yeah, I mean, it'll go down a little bit, but I don't think it'll move that much. It's already low as it is. Yeah. There's well, your. Well, if it goes down six percent, that's thirty-three percent. Your resume Last, right? update. Jeez. Our question of the day: Is there an at-large path to the NCAA tournament that does not include beating St. Mary's? I believe there is. Certainly, Jerem's case of beating St. Mary's helps BYU feel a lot better. Put some deodorant on before they go into sweating on Selection Sunday. I don't know how you don't. <laughs> Let's hear from you, BYUSN and Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At WD Heath Answers on Twitter. Of course, BYU would then be the four or five seed if they lost to St. Mary's and have a chance to beat Gonzaga in the semis. Do that and you're in. Easy, right? Easy. (laughs) The best part, though, will be next week when the question doesn't matter because BYU wins on Saturday. It's a huge game, man. Feels like... uh... 
the season comes down. It's you're saying it's not that dramatic. I think it's that dramatic. I really do. I, I think it's obviously there are other games to be had, but if you're on the same side of the bracket as Gonzaga, ugh. well, BYU could still beat St. Mary's and be on the same side of the bracket as true Gonzaga. We don't know what Ken Palm adjusted win percentage will yield. Like, this. like will BYU? I'm, a, I'm expecting BYU to be Chance, on the Gonzaga yes. side of the bracket. Yes. The hope is that you beat St. Mary's and that St. Mary's, um, you know beats San Francisco tomorrow night so that yes. San Fran is the one we need to slide. That's the team we need to slide. Yeah. BYU and San Francisco in the quarterfinals, please. BYU San Francisco quarterfinals Saturday, would be wild. That's Saturday a... in Vegas, that would be intense yeah. for the right to play Gonzaga. As the 4-5. And Santa Clara snuck up to the 3? Well, here's the thing. San oh. Francisco has way more tougher games, quantity, than Santa Clara does remaining. Santa Clara has one hard game remaining and the rest against bottom dwellers. Hmm. So if San Francisco loses six games, then I would assume they'll be the four. We'll see. Yeah, St. Mary's and Gonzaga is still sitting there for them. Okay, coming up, Big 12 teams are 4-9 in league and still in the bracket? That's madness. Plus, let's keep our NFL season recap going with Brady Christensen, who just finished his rookie campaign in the Carolina Panthers. What's it like blocking for Christian McCaffrey? We'll ask him. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Did you know Tegan Graham made 10 threes in the game this year, Spencer? That was pretty cool. Tomorrow at 1 Eastern, following BYU Sports Nation, 20th ranked women's basketball hosts LMU in the penultimate home game for this amazing team. Catch it on BYU TV and the app. Well, Tegan wears number 10, so she may as well make 10 threes in a game, right? Might as well. I like it. Do it again. I love it. That's great. That was amazing. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. And as promised, we now welcome over Zoom into the show Carolina Panthers rookie, or should I say no longer a rookie. Yeah, no longer. Brady yeah. Christensen. Hey. You're, a, you're a veteran, hey. man. Brady, great to have you on nope. BYU Sports Nation. It's great to be here, and it's even greater that I'm not a rookie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's it like being a rookie off the field with an NFL team? Oh, it's uh, it's rough. You got all the rookie duties, you know, like I had to go get, I spent probably thousands of dollars in snacks and coffee machines and <laughs> And you just have to go run all the errands and stuff. So it, it's good. I, I I enjoy it. You know, every before every flight, you had to go get them food. You know, sometimes I had two stops <laughs> at two different food places. So it's uh, it's busy, but it's fun. You're like, guys, I already paid ten percent. <laughs> Can I just keep this? It's uh, come on. This is my money. No, that's funny. There's come a, on. Yeah, yeah. There's a ten percent tithe in effort plus fast and, offerings. And you guys treats for the guys. Yeah. All right, Brady. How how would you sum up? your rookie experience and your rookie campaign on the field this past season? I want to summarize. I think I was watching this show and Steve Young said, like, guys go to the NFL for the ultimate challenge. And that's really how I explained it. It was the ultimate challenge. And um, it was awesome. I, I learned a lot. I played a lot of different positions last year. I played, I mean, in every, every position except the center on the O-line. And so I learned a ton that way. And then just, uh, really learned about myself that I can compete at that level. And that's kind of how I sum up my Rick year, but it was awesome. It was amazing. Great learning experience. So fun. And it's everything like you think the NFL would be plus plus more. Yeah. When, when were you like, okay, the, you know, you're welcome to the NFL moment slash when, and when were you comfortable where you were like, okay, I fit in here. Um, Man, I had a lot of welcome to the NFL moments. There wasn't just one <laughs> top of my head that I can uh, – can, uh, but I think really towards the end of the season, um, probably – we played the Falcons probably fifth to last game. And I, I started right guard, and it's kind of new to me. Um, and went against one of the best – I think the best – one of the best D tackles, Grady Jarrett, and and really enjoyed that game and, and got a lot better that game. And then the last three games of the year, I, played, I started at left tackle and, and kind of – really started to, you know, gain that confidence that I belong in the NFL and that I can compete at a high level. I mean, every week, that's the crazy thing about the NFL. You got some someone who is the best at what they do lined up against you. And so to have that challenge week in and week out was I, I enjoyed it. And I, I just, you know, enjoyed the, the challenge of doing my best and, and competing against the best. 
I think the operative word thus far is challenge. You called the NFL rookie experience the ultimate challenge. You played every position on the offensive line except center. So do you have a favorite position right now based on the experience you picked up? Yeah, you can't tell anyone, but uh, left tackle is still my favorite. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> okay, you go old, now, reliable. I, I, yeah, it's just, I mean, I love that position. I, I, I enjoy it. I obviously probably the most comfortable there just because I've done it the most, but I, I enjoyed switching around. You know, I enjoyed playing on the right side. Haven't done that a lot. Enjoyed playing in the guard. You just like, I think when you play all the different positions, you realize like you learn instead of just focusing on the left tackle, you now know what everyone is doing on every play. And so I enjoyed learning that and about offensive line play and just uh, doing something different. <laughs> You told us in the 2020 season that you would typically run down to the end zone and celebrate with the guys, but then you started scoring too much and you were a little tired, so you would just like welcome them back when they got to the sideline. What was it like in the NFL? Did you run down to the end zone, or is there, or or if it's like a 25 plus yard touchdown, do you just go to the sideline? How does that work? Uh, no, no, I tried to celebrate. One is Cam Newton's one of his first games and. And he scored. So, you know, I was like, I'm going to go celebrate with him, get on TV. <laughs> and, and it's Cam Newton. He, I should have known he was going to go to the center of the field and do his thing, and the fans were going crazy. And so I ran right past him, and he ran right past me. And, <laughs> so, <laughs> and, so, Damn! And, and then I just turned around and went to field goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's Brady great. Christensen is with us on BYU Sports Station. Come on, Cam Newton, celebrate with your offensive Come lineman. Here. <laughs> okay, that's a great story. You also play with Christian McCaffrey, who has been dealing with injury concerns for sure, but what's it like to block for and play with one of the ultimate stars, a guy who has a 99 rating on Madden football? Yeah, he, he moves like a gazelle. Like It's unbelievable to watch that guy move and run. That's the thing. You just need like up front blocking for him. Like I always thought if I just get a little bit of movement, that guy can break it at any time, and that's – same with a lot of guys in the NFL. Cam Newton was the same way, you know, but we had a bunch of guys. But you just – up front, you're like, okay, I just got to do my job just for a couple seconds and they can break it. And so I really enjoyed playing for him. He's such a good, humble guy and and really taught me a lot about film study and really took me under his wing. So I, I really appreciate him for that. And, and obviously he's going to have a great bounce back year uh, next year after he's injured. Pro football uh, reference says you only had one holding and one false start all year. Is that right? I I think so. That's pretty Knock good, dude. Wood. That's pretty good. Yeah. Do, do you remember each of those since you only had two? Yes. Uh, I think the first holding one was against the Eagles. I was playing right tackle. And I thought it was a, a great block. I thought I just pancaked the guy. My hands were a little wide, so that's probably why they called it. But my whole family said they showed me on the TV and – and I was mouthing some words that probably aren't appropriate for the show. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were giving me some crap for that, but I, I remember that one. And then false start, I, I, I can't remember. I think I was pulling, and I got a little uh, little anxious and kind of switched a little bit. But those are the two. Dang fetch, you know <laughs> stuff like that. Dor yeah. Darn, yeah, it. Yeah, darn it! Darn it! Darn it! Heck, those words. Son of a gun, <laughs> fetcher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's that moment like? What's that moment like when you hear an NFL referee call out your number and you know, man, everyone watched the game knows that I just committed that penalty. What's that like for you emotionally? Uh, well, you always – I mean, at first you look up at the big screen, at least I do, to like watch the replay and be like, was that really old? Yeah. And then once it kind of – you watch it and you just – it's it's not fun. It is – we don't get a lot of attention up front on the offensive line. And when, you, when we do, it's usually not good. And it's not that fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, only two though. Bravo. I, I, I want to shoot a commercial or something where that happens in real life. Like you make a mistake and someone announces it publicly <laughs> to everybody else. And they're like, Oh, it's that guy or whatever. That's it's a weird moment, right? Okay. Um, I want to ask about James MP. So he's a guy that certainly has NFL potential. Um, unfortunately, you know, got hurt at the end of the season. So, Maybe someone will draft him late, but he's going to get a free agent opportunity at a minimum. Didn't get the combine invite, maybe because he was hurt. I'm not sure. But what do you think of his chances to make a roster? I think it's incredibly high. Um, we play, I played with a center, Matt Paradis, for sure. He's, 
I would say they're they're pretty similar just as far as with the way their brain thinks. As as a centering man, you you kind of the start of the whole offense. You got to like make the points and make the calls. And so if you don't have a guy that understands defenses at a crazy high level and understand the offensive scheme at a high level, it's not going to go anywhere. And James can do that. His brain is is unbelievable. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever played with, and that alone will help him. And then plus he's very athletic and very uh, sound uh, technically. And so he's definitely going to get a great shot. I have no doubt. I think that guy's a stud and I'm excited for him and excited to see where, where he goes. All right, let's take it another step because I know he's your good friend. You've gone through the process. What advice would you give to him as he pursues an NFL career? I told, I told him cause we, we talked the other day and he was talking about not getting the combine invite. And I said, James, look, I believe that NFL teams are looking at your film first and foremost, right? And he has a great film. He's played a lot of years, and just because he got injured the last couple of games doesn't take away the previous film. And so really rely on that and trust that because there's so much unknown with the whole process of getting drafted. You're like, you're always checking social media, like wonder where the mock drafts got me, you know, even though we say we don't, we do. Um, <laughs> and so – so really just just trust yourself and trust that film and, and just work your tail off and, and just trust the process and, and it will all work out. Tyler Algier is going to be drafting. We don't know what round we're hoping, you know, third, fourth, something like that. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure you would love Tyler on the Panthers. I'm sure Zach would love Tyler on the Jets. What's it like as you see some of these guys from that 2020 team get into the NFL? Yeah, it's uh... – I always I love following BYU this whole year and love following the guys. I'll never stop following BYU, um, and so I've enjoyed it. And yeah, Tyler just had a crazy year, so I'm I'm pumped to see to see where he goes. Obviously, yeah, I love him on on in Carolina, but yeah. wherever he goes, he's he's gonna kill it. And he's such a such a patient runner, and just like yeah, just like crazy patient. And then when he finds the hole, he just he explodes through. I I don't think people realize how athletic this dude is you know and he's so explosive that i'm just so excited to see his numbers at the combine too because he's going to really surprise people because because of, of his athleticism and, and just his vision of of the holes and everything it's uh he's been fun to watch yeah don't be shocked to see tyler run a 4-4 flat or even in the four threes because he's done nope, that before nope. laser timed yep don't oh. be surprised now brady i know that you're still relatively speaking a new father and you just went through really busy rookie season. So how do you balance the work life scenario of being in the NFL and being a husband and now having a young child? There's one key word, uh, no school. <laughs> that made, that That's made two, words, <laughs> two words, Brady. School did you no favors there. <laughs> uh, oh, um, no, no, but, but instead of, you know, like, Obviously, NFL life is crazy busy. You're always gone every weekend. Fall camp was crazy hard. But when you're done with work throughout the day, like in college, you'd go home and you'd study. You'd have to. Um, but in the NFL, uh, if you get home, you know, 7 or 8 o'clock at night, instead of um, studying, I would read my kid a story, you know, take uh, give him a bath and just do that type of thing. And so I really enjoyed coming home every night and and, and you know, spending some time and not worrying about studying, spending some time with my wife and my son Ledger. And so you just, you know, you, you just figure it out. You obviously give up your all to football, but you also have a family and you give your all to them too. And, and you can do it. What's next for you in the off season now? What's next? Uh, we're actually going to a little trip with my wife's family next week to Disneyland. Um, so we'll hang out for a little bit. Uh, I've been training at Shrove Performance down in Pleasant Grove. And then next step, uh, I'm going to go to Dallas for a little bit to train down there uh, with the O-line guy down there that James is actually at right now. Um, so really just trying to work on my craft, get my body right, get it healthy, get it strong, um, and really just really work on my craft and get that technique down. Brady, I just hope there's time in your schedule to play some golf because I know you're a big golfer. I know, I know you're into that. Oh, yeah. Hey, I went, uh, I took my dad to the Super Bowl, um, and that was kind of, and then he took me golfing. We went there, we uh, played at a course called Pelican Hill down in, uh, I think it was Newport Beach. Beautiful course. Fantastic. Um, really enjoyed it, really enjoyed the Super Bowl too. Once in a lifetime experience. And so that, that was a fun little uh, weekend getaway too. 
Now, I know I've mentioned this to you before, but uh, you're obviously a reason for Jerem and I to go to Carolina, North Carolina, and, and maybe just visit, I don't know, Pinehurst and, and play another famous course out there. Uh, I live probably five minutes next to Quill Hollow, too. So okay. Okay. I know a couple, okay. right, I know a couple people that uh, are members there, too. So come on out. Okay. We'll, get, we'll get on uh, one I of those love courses. It. Let's do it. I can't wait to lose to uh, the bearded wonder, Brady Christensen in golf. <laughs> <laughs> if we're playing, we all win. This yes. True. Brady, we all win. <laughs> congratulations on a great NFL uh, rookie season. We look forward to much more, and we appreciate you hanging out with us, man. Appreciate it, guys. It's awesome. Have a good one. You got it. Brady Christensen with us on BYU Sports Nation. He's one of our favorites. Like He's you, just so you chill can see why. and very fun, very loose, like down to earth. And he, he's exactly right. Like, he had to play all over the O-line. Like, he's a guy that started left tackle for, what, three years for BYU? Two and a half years for BYU? And then uh, he played, yeah, all the – we'll see what Carolina does with him. I would love to see him at left tackle, obviously. But, like, the fact that he's that versatile meant that he can be in the NFL and be on that he's team, He's extremely right? valuable. Yeah. Versatile and valuable. Like, who knows? Some some people are saying from stuff I've read, like, yeah, put him at guard, draft a tackle. I don't know. He wants to play tackle. Let's go. So I just got a message from my brother Trevor. He says, Pelican Hill, the course that Brady just referenced, yes. is top five best ever played for me. And my brother oh. is a golf junkie. Oh, yeah. No, top that's saying a lot from Trevor. Played. Yeah, that's incredible. Okay. okay. Maybe we should have Brady take us to Pelican Hill. Well, you know, <laughs> he'd probably have to pay for us as well. Jeez. Okay, coming up, Violet Zavodnik, the softball freshman and player of the end of WCC last year, joins the program. And big game boomer, he really did it this time. Oh, man. He listed a big brother and little brother in every state. <sighs> Do you agree with what he said? We're, we're at, we guess, but we're asking for trouble. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation. I'm coming for you, Ogden. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Friday night, number 19, BYU Gymnastics in action, hosting number 23, Southern Utah, the Flippin' Birds in the Smithfield House, 9 Eastern on BYU TV. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton, and this is BYU Sports Nation. We just talked with Brady Christensen, recapping his rookie season with the Carolina Panthers. It was an awesome conversation. If you missed it, you absolutely need to go back and watch it slash listen to it. Outstanding great. Great. stuff. To interact with the show at any point and get content throughout the day, follow us on all the major social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. Big Game Boomer put out a list of big brother and little brother in every state. Oh, boy. We look at Montana net no, uh, BYU was big bro. Utah was little bro. Oh boy, who should be more offended, Utah or Utah State? <laughs> it should absolutely be Utah. After beating BYU nine times in a row, <laughs> Utah should be the big brother. And they really should. And BYU is listed as big brother for <laughs> one win. Utah should absolutely feel ultimate disrespect yeah if we're talking whole athletic department and national fan base and blah 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 certainly we feel like byu has that right but Utah just went to a rose bowl too like come on we think this is driven primarily by football right we think this is driven by big game boomer who favors byu considerably now i will offer this not always does he favor byu considerably it's not gonna in be his, every time in his way too early top 25 rankings he had Utah number three and BYU number 24. It's fair that Utah would be higher than BYU. Given oh, I get that, but number yeah. three, number three. No, three is too much. Yeah. So, so is he all in on just trolling Utah? No, but he is pretty favorable <laughs> for the it's obvious. The Super Bowl had 112.3 million viewers. The most watched Super Bowl show in five years. Was it more about the game, Jerem, or should we just give credit to the halftime show for driving up those numbers? It helps that the game was close. The game wasn't good, but it was close. Uh, but you the halftime was, was dope. good. Well, it, no, it wasn't great football. Really? No. Just because it's close doesn't mean it's a good no, I game. I thought it was very entertaining. Trick plays and Inter stuff? Entertaining. Uh, yeah. It, no, I want a little more offensive flow there. Okay. Yeah. Very few penalties. Neither team could run. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A lot yeah. of punting. Jeff, yeah. I thought, I thought if it was, you like punts, uh, it was great. I yeah. thought it was a good game. Not a great game. I thought it was a good game. Yeah. Again, it just because like it's close results. doesn't make it good. Uh, the halftime show certainly helped. I mean, when you when you bring that cast of stars, people 
will be more dialed into just, hey, let's just eat food and whatever happens in the game. I want to see Snoop and I want to see Dr. Dre and Eminem and maybe 50 Cent. Dollar Cent. Iowa State and Oklahoma are 4-9 and nine in men's basketball in conference play in the Big 12 and still projected to make the NCAA tournament. Are you excited to be five games below 500 and have a chance to make March Madness when BYU is in the Big 12? Uh, yes, I'm excited for BYU to be in the Big 12 and to not have to worry like we are right now if you lose a game late in the season or two or four of being totally out of the conversation or right on the cusp of being out of the conversation. Like, I, I would love for BYU to be like, Iowa State and be four and nine and be like, oh, we're in a better place than BYU is. They had a good non-conference schedule. Um, what's what's interesting too about this is that you have a couple teams that are have some good quad one. So Iowa State is actually eight and seven in quad one. Quad one. That's like, how that's how your four and nine in conference like, is still a team. They should be in if they have eight quad one wins. That's a lot. Jaron, BYU baseball and softball are getting some new scoreboards, video boards. They're going to be nice. I ask you, will the scoreboard need any repairs this year from home runs? Yes. Mitch McIntyre, Josh Cowden, and Cole Gamble will launch a few into that scoreboard, I guarantee. I'm interested to know how they're going to prevent that from just being crushed when a baseball is going to slam into that. Yeah, will like a net be placed in front of the screen? I don't – I would hope not because then you're looking through a net at the screen. feels weird. I don't know. It, it just must be so durable that can it can handle a ball. Well, they're paying so much money. Yeah, Major League Baseball teams have had to have figured this out, right? I would think so. <laughs> it's paying BYU, that much money. It better be okay handling a home run. Yes. BYU Women's Hoops is a five seed in Charlie Cream's latest bracketology. Is there a path for Women's Hoops to get better than a five seed? There should be. I think BYU right now should be better than a five seed. They're a top 10 net team. They've lost two games overall, right, both quad will, one road losses. Will they? Do? I don't I don't know. I, I think the best that BYU can do this year is if they win out, meaning they beat Gonzaga and LMU this week, and then take care of business next week, win the West Coast Conference Tournament, then probably a four seed. But then you get into BYU hosting, and that's complicated with the NCAA because the games are over a Saturday, Sunday, Monday scenario, yeah, and the Sunday, arena Monday. needs to be available Sorry, on Saturday, Sunday. Monday. That didn't happen. And it just gets weird, right? Yeah. And so maybe the NCAA is like, well, let's just take the easy way out and just put BYU as the top five seed. I would hope they're a four so they can match up better. Like, like if you deserve a four, you should have four just because you can't host. I want, B- I want BYU to host at a neutral site. Is there an arena in Utah that could yeah. do it? Let's yeah. make it happen. Old Provo High, let's go. <laughs> Just kidding, don't do that. There's probably some ghosts in there. Coming up, rise and shout out. And Violet Zavodnik of BYU Softball, which is a rising star. Spent some time with Team USA. No, straight star, bro. Yeah, okay. So she, okay. The rising star. happened last year. She can still rise. She can be a star and become an even, even more star. All American, let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest episode of BYU Basketball with Mark Pope, Alex Barcelo was the guest. Talked about the history made with the starting lineup last week. I uh, went into the film room with Spencer Johnson and much, much more. Watch it on demand on the BYU TV app. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B. Let's get right to our next guest. And as we pointed out before the break, she has risen. Like star. Her, her star, star has risen. Let's go. But that doesn't mean it can't rise even higher. True. Violet Zavodnik True. of BYU Softball joins us. Four wins in the first five games for the Cougars. It's always a crazy month of February with so much traveling. Good luck with your homework as you like go on all these trips. What's it like for you in February as a student athlete trying to balance all that, play a bunch of games, and, and try and stay on top of homework? It's definitely hard. A lot of study hall, a lot of homework, and just like mentally putting yourself in the game and in the, in the classroom, is it's pretty hard. But honestly, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Okay. I mean, you're on the road for like a month straight, right? Yeah, we started last week, and now we're on for four more weeks until we play our first home game. What do you mean? They get to come home Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Yeah, they're sad. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, the season's begun. As Spencer mentioned, you guys start out 4-1, and one, which is awesome. What's year two like for you? Because last year was like, hey, Violet's going to be good. Um, and then you were the freshman and player of the year in the, the conference. And this is a loaded team. Mm-hmm. So how's year two so far? 
Uh, so far, so good. I'm enjoying it so much. The new freshmen coming in, the transfers coming in, it's just a bit different. I mean, we lost a couple players, so it's kind of hard to go from that. But honestly, like, I'm already excited for it. And it's only been five games that we've played, so yeah. Okay, because it is early and you have only played five games, do you feel like you can pinpoint the strength of this team right now? If so, what is it? I personally believe it's our bonding. I feel like this team is... I don't even know how to explain it. It's just we're all together. We're like a family. And so I think that right there is the strongest that we have. Tell us about uh, one of the new pitchers, Chloe Temples from Stetson, who's the West Coast Conference Pitcher of the Week. A transfer comes in. She adds to an already good staff, mm -hmm. and she had a great week. Got the, uh, got the nod there. Oh, I love Chloe. She's literally one of my favorites. She, besides working so hard on the field, she works so hard in the classroom. Like, when I tell you she does a lot of homework, she does a lot. But – to the pitching staff, she's unbelievable. Like, I already hate hitting off of her, so I can imagine other teams hitting off of her. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> West Coast Conference team specifically, hitting off Chloe Temples. Yes. Pitching is always a huge part of softball. And, you know, when you have pitching, BYU's offense has been there for the past mm -hmm. forever, it feels like. But when you've had special pitchers, it feels like the teams are capable of doing something extra. Do you feel like the pitching is in place for this team – to combine with offense and go next level? Oh, 100%. Our pitching this year is outstanding. And then plus our offense, like, we're going to be, like, unbeatable. Like, that's personally what I feel, but I know, like, we'll be unbeatable in conference and even towards regionals. Big game with Stanford this week, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. that'll, be, that'll be a good test for you guys as well. So um, there are a lot of, uh, you know, returning pieces that are awesome in uh, Martha Epinesa and Hunter Ava and Marissa Chavez and company. Um, what kind of uh, – and you form, you know, part of that leadership team. What's the leadership of, of this group like as you embrace a lot of newcomers like you talked about? It's amazing. I feel like each one of us has something to contribute. And so, like, when we come together as, like, a leadership team, bringing in all the transfers, the freshmen, I feel like we're bringing them home to a place where it's, like, amazing. Like, you can't, you can't beat it. And, like, we're just ready for them to prove themselves because we already know that they're good. So just knowing that everyone else knows that they're good, that's what we're hoping for. Okay, so Jerem just mentioned Stanford. What is it about the Stanford game that has you so amped up and excited to play in that contest? Um, so when we played them back when home, when we traveled in February, we lost on a walk-off. And it sticks in our brains so much because they're a good team. And but they're not like the best team, and I know we, we can beat them because when they came home too, and we came, we played them here, we lost to them again. So it's kind of like we built a little bit of a rivalry. So we kind of have to beat them. <laughs> yep, you got to win to make it a real rivalry. Oh yeah, right? yeah, exactly, 100%. exactly. Um, and and playing in Provo would be awesome. You're playing there this weekend. Mm -hmm. You did some Team USA stuff in the fall. Tell us yeah. about that. It was pretty cool to see what you were doing. Oh, it was amazing. Once in a lifetime opportunity. I felt like the little girl inside of me was like, oh my god, like you're playing with like the USA letters on your shirt but playing with the best of the best in my like age group was unbelievable was it U19 or something what yeah, was it? yeah it was pretty much everyone there was a few people in colleges that were like sophomore and then a couple freshmen and then a couple like high school players and seeing them like it's unbelievable like just they're so good where'd you play again and we played you guys do? in Columbia during the Pan Am games and then we went to Peru to play the World Cup wild wow what was it like playing in another country like that? That's insane. Like, I just, going international and playing international teams, like, that's just once in a lifetime. I was, like, <laughs> breathtaking. I was out of breath every time. Was Colombia cool in Peru? Colombia was a little sketchy. We put in a little sketchy part of it. But Peru, I think that was my favorite. Mm. And the food there. Amazing. amazing. So it good. was so good. Now you're, now you're scoping out Peruvian joints. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, 100%. <laughs> nice. I love it. Violet Zavodnik of BYU Softball with us on BYU Sports Nation. Other than Stanford, which other teams are you looking forward to playing most? Because typically the BYU softball schedule is loaded, loaded with big names. Um, personally, Utah. Obviously, Utah because we have Good so many answer. new players. <laughs> but um, besides that, I'm excited to play Iowa State. I mean, we've never played them. They're in the Big 12. We're going to mm. play them soon, so I'm excited to see what they have to offer. The taste of the Big 12? Exactly. Okay. And you'll be here long enough to be in the Big oh, 12, yeah. which is exciting. I'm excited you're, for you're that. Still, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing Arizona State on there. I know that was a pretty Back to crazy rivalry game. Too. Yeah, we have Macy Simmons, our transfer. She's from ASU. So definitely that game is okay, going to be a okay. big game. Some, some history there in the regional, right? Yeah. Tennessee, which is exciting. And then Oregon. Yeah, Iowa State and Provo on BYU TV. Their app uh -huh. It's going to be uh -huh. good. Yeah, it's kind of fun. 
Are you used to playing on TV? Because not all softball is televised. Mm-mm. But at this school, it's fun. We get to have yeah. softball games on TV or the app. You know? I'm excited for it. I don't, like, growing up not being on TV is kind of like, eh. But, like, now being on TV, I'm like, ah, I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you used to the cameras around and stuff? Like, yeah, I'm used to it. Like, it's, it's weird, like, being in the outfield sometimes. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, like, it, right it's behind right you, It's right behind me. And I wonder if the guy hears me because I do talk to myself a lot in the <laughs> outfield. And I wanted to create a conversation, but I'm like, he probably is busy. But, yeah, it's a little... They're not. <laughs> hey, I promise you they're you not. you want to converse talking. with those guys, we'll give you the green light. Go okay, ahead. perfect. If you, yeah, Talk if to you them, get bored, yeah, whatever. whatever. They get, They probably, yeah. No, you both have a job to okay, do. But perfect. You're protecting time, right? them in a way. By, you've made True. some catches over the wall that, you know, could frankly protect those guys. Well, and they might get the shot of some dramatic, you know, Ken Griffey Jr. flying up the wall True. catch that may get you on sports. Center. Yeah, you know that's fan? true. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you need a relationship. Need a relationship. Mutually <laughs> beneficial. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Violet, let's Let's have you uh, take some BYU Sports Nation karma, beat Stanford, okay? And then, we again, we, we're still transitioning back into having players sign the flag. Have you signed our flag? I have not. I think we had you on Zoom. We had on Zoom, yeah, we were yeah. in regionals. Yeah, I remember. Now that you're in studio, we would love we for you to, to sign our flag before you go. Yeah, here you go. Pick the spot. It's, it's been a minute. It has you know? been a minute. I don't yeah. know. There's a bunch of and, and wherever you want, watch your step down here. Okay, yeah. Violet signing the flag. Awesome. Again, this star. I know. She's a star, dude. This team's loaded. <laughs> Forever so rising. Let me tell you why softball's super underrated if you don't have an appreciation of it. BYU will win in five innings. It'll be a buck 15 sometimes. <laughs> Just, uh, in and out, right? You guys are in and yes. out, which is super You're fun. always looking out for us. Oh, yeah. We've got things to do. You know. <laughs> we got dinner plans. It's a doubleheader. Yeah, boom, yes. boom. Yeah, let's go. Also, you so. win conference championships. Oh, yes. Four conferences in the last decade. BYU has it's, won the conference championships in all four. It's easy to love a winner. Yeah, yeah. It really 100%. is. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Violet. Thanks. Of course, thank you. Okay, coming up, who among you? Good to see a lead voice of the day. And a rise and shout out well deserved to one of our brothers. This is BYU Sports Nation. Who's it going to be? I don't even know. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Station always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Should have been a, should have been a four point play against San Diego State. That one right there. Download the podcast as well by Googling BYU Sports Nation podcast or using the search engine of your heart's desire. <laughs> Whatever that search is. Search engine. Uh, That's still yeah. a thing. Yeah. Our question of the day Is there an at large path to the NCAA tournament that does not include BYU men's basketball beating St. Mary's? No. I think there is. <laughs> Listen to our conversation early in today's show. No. Our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Gary Holdsworth on Facebook says, Gary. Just win. Beat St. Mary's. Angst solved. Like, even if BYU beats St. Mary's Saturday, we will, st- <laughs> we will still be sweaty mm, going into the WCC tournament. Yeah, perspiring a little just, bit. Just because. It's a workout jog. Yeah. Rather than a full <laughs> sprint. Like, hopefully BYU's in. Oh, it'd be nice. It'd be so nice. If BYU beats St. Mary's and then beats LME and Pepperdine at home, which they will. Feeling feeling much better. And they're the four seed going into Vegas at least. Yeah. Then you're playing Santa Clara, San Francisco in a on Saturday. Then, then you might Saturday, then, there's then, some pressure to win that game too, but still like yes. you're not oh, feeling no, like I still think you need to win that game. Yeah, yeah. I think BYU will still be on the bubble. It'll just be like, is BYU uh, Seven si- six collapsing? spots in? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. You're in that final eight still. You know. Today's rise and shout-outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We got to give one to Jimmer for debt. Yeah, that was fun. Um, you know, but Jimmer, we, the show's at 10 every day. Just, time. You forgot? Oh, is this a bad time? <laughs> <laughs> and whatever the opposite of a rise and shout-out is uh, to, to – uh, you know, Greg Short for also trying to tap in after Jimmer. Come on. Man. A rise and bow out. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? A bow out and whisper? I don't know. We, no we need to give a rise and shout out to Big Game Boomer, too, <laughs> for dubbing BYU the big brother in the state of Utah. That's, listen, listen. He saw the banner. It's, it's hard to, <laughs> yeah. It's hard to admit, but yeah, you got to win more than once, probably. Right? He saw the banner. Keep it, go- keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking whole athletic department, national fan base, and program prestige overall. Yes. yes. Yeah, Brigham. But All right. It's it's siblings, you know. It's I don't see it as big little fellow siblings. 
Now, thoroughly. BYU's going to be in a Power 5 conference. There's no reason not to come to Brigham. Well, Unless we'll you don't we'll want to. We'll hang a real Power 5 banner. <laughs> Unless you, well, hopefully. First decade, maybe. Our thanks to today's guests, Brady Christensen and Violet Zavodnik. Sorry to Dennis. No time. See you. For Jeremiah, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Nancy Selyus. We'll see you tomorrow on BYU Sports Nation. Go Cougs.